In the previous video, we built out the uh, Google Places search. And in this video, we're gonna complete the rest of the form. So that includes adding two additional inputs. The first to, co to collect the image of the house and then the next to collect the number of bedrooms and then we'll add a button to submit it. So we're not gonna build the back end yet. That will be in future videos, but this goal is just to complete the form um, from top to bottom. So if we go into the code, we're working in the house form and it's starting to get pretty big. We're at 70 lines. It's gonna be quite a bit more by the time we're done, but um, it's a complicated piece. So the first thing we're going to do is just go below this div here that has the, um, the search. So below the div that shows the search here. And we're gonna add another div and we're gonna give it a class name of MT4 to separate it a little bit, uh, margin top of uh, four from the uh, input above it. And then we're gonna add a label. So this, it's a little bit tedious. It's gonna be a lot of uh, typing and um, not super complicated code, just a lot of sort of typing HTML4. So this is for the image. We're gonna add a bunch of class names to this uh, label. And you'll see why in a second, we're sort of gonna make it look like a button. So we're not gonna show the input, the form type of input itself, cause it's, it's a little bit ugly. So we're gonna show this label, but make it look nice. So we'll give it a border dashed of size four and we'll give it a color of gray 600. It's gonna be block, and we wanna change the cursor to pointer uh, when we're over top of it. So in here for the text, we're gonna say click to add image, and we'll give the user the dimensions so that ideally they can choose a, an image that fits well with what we're doing. So if we go here, we get this. This is the label, even though it sort of looks like a button that you can click. Doesn't do anything yet, that's to come soon. So below the label, we're going to put the actual input. So this is an input and we gotta give it an ID to match the label. So we'll give it an ID of image. Its name is going to be image and its type is going to be file. Um, we can limit the, the types of files that the user can choose from when they get the dialog that pops open by saying accept and then we give it a MIME type. So we can say images slash, and rather than saying image JPEG, PNG, whatever, all the different image types, we can just say slash star. So you're allowed to add any type of image. So if we were to just save it at this point, we get this sort of ugly choose file thing, but clicking the label actually pops open um, this dialog. And it is allowing me to choose CSVs, so maybe I did something wrong. Accept images slash, no, I think that's right. We'll just go with it for now. Accept um, input HTML, accept string of undefined. I don't know, we'll go with it for now. What we're actually gonna do is say style of display none because we don't want this um, showing up. We want just the, the label. So we need to connect this input to our React hook form. So to this use form up here. And we do that by adding a ref. And in the ref, we call the register function. So if you don't want any special validations, you can just call register, but we want to add some special um, a validation function. So you can validate with a function where what it will do is receive sort of the current input value. And this is a type of file list. So we're gonna type it correctly here. And it's an arrow function. And what this wants to do is basically to return true if everything's okay, or to return a string of the error message if there's a validation error. So what we're gonna just do is ensure that they've entered at least one file. So we're gonna say file list of length is greater than, we could even say is equal to one. So if that's the case, return true. Otherwise say, please um, upload one file like that. So that error will show up um, if, if this string is returned here. So the next thing we wanna do is basically, we wanna show a nice preview below here. 
Um, prior to uploading the image to Cloudinary and all of that, we want to display it sort of real time on the screen. And to do that, we're first going to hop up right to the top. You can put this above the submitting or below, it doesn't really matter. Um, we are going to create some state called the preview image. So we'll say set preview image, and it is going to be equal to use state. Now this is going to be a string and we'll just call that here. So coming down back to the input, what we want to do is listen for the on change event. So this is an arrow function and the value that it receives is the event and we just need to type it correctly. So it's a change event on HTML input, um, input element like that. And then we come down here, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see that there's an actual file that the user has chosen. So we're going to add an if statement and we're going to say, if the event has a target and that target has files and there is a file, do something. And TypeScript doesn't seem to like that because there's a whole bunch of like possible nulls here. So to get around that, we can use um, optional chaining by just putting question marks in front of each one so that it will only call the next part of that if the first part is uh, not null, if it has a value. So if this is the case, what we can do is we can say const file and we'll just grab the file. So target.files at zero. Um, we shouldn't have to say anything at this point. Oh, it's just telling us that why is this possibly null? It's not null because we checked. We'll just keep going and hopefully it will figure itself out. If not, we'll have to come back to that. So const reader is equal to, so we're going to use something called a file reader. And file reader, it reads files, obviously. So we're going to say reader dot read as data URL. And we're going to pass in a blob. Well, this file here is of type blob. So what we can do is we can say this. Okay, I was just wondering why it, it's not, do I have like a syntax error somewhere? Why is it giving me, I messed up something. Do, 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 on change. Oh, this is why. Okay, I was missing a dot before, that's sort of weird syntax, no? A dot before accessing the first element of the files in the file list. So after I added that question mark dot, all of the highlighting worked and my TypeScript errors went away. So that's great. So continue on. So we've got our reader set up, which is a new instance of file reader. We're reading as data URL from the file. But just before here, what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, an event on load end that is called when it has finished loading this file into the reader. And when that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to set this state that we set up. So preview image, and we're going to pass it the result of the reader. So reader dot result. And now because this result can be a string or an array buffer or null, um, we know it's a string because of this read as data URL, but the TypeScript doesn't really know that. So we just have to say as a string to point TypeScript in the right direction and to align it with the type of the state that we set up. So what we can do just for fun, why don't we show the preview image below? So we're going to choose this. We're going to go to desktop where I have some houses and we're going to look at this one and beautiful. So that's what an image looks like in base 64 version of it. So it's, it's an image slash JPEG base 64. And why don't I just HTML input file accept. I want to try to see why that accept attribute. That's why. 
Boom, Googling. All right, sorry about that. Is it weird to leave errors in a video of a course? I guess not, because that's the real stuff, but now if we were to go to downloads, for example, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so back to desktop houses. So we obviously don't want to show it as this ridiculous base64 string. What we want to do is display it as an actual image. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if there's a preview image, so and and, we're going to show an image tag. And the SRC for this image, the source of it, is going to be the preview image because you can pass in base64 strings to an image tag, but we want to style it a little bit. So we're going to give it a class name of a little bit of margin top and we're going to tell it object cover. Now, next thing we want to do is we're going to use style to set some inline style properties of the width, just because I want it to be actual pixels. Um, so we're going to say 576 pixels and we want to give it a height, but I want it that 16 by nine ratio. So what I want to do is set a height and we're going to put it in backtick strings so we can embed. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a calculation that will give us some pixels. And we're going to say nine by 16 times 576. So I don't know what the height based on the 16 by nine ratio is of 576. So we're just going to calculate it real time. So we don't even need to think about that. And if that's the case, okay, we're good. We had short circuit, show the image. Let's see if it's uh, displaying and it is boom. There we go. And even though I set a hard pixel, it's still going to on mobile devices. It's not going to sort of bleed. Um, probably because there's a max width of hundred percent on that somewhere. So we don't need to worry about that. There's a donkey in front of this house and it's showing up in the right aspect ratio. And you can see that, see the, that's the object cover, how it's sort of resizing there. So the last thing I want to do here is just display the errors if there are any. So we'll say if there's errors on the image, if that's the case, we're going to show a P and in the P we're going to show errors dot image dot message like that. Okay, it's time to move on to the next um, input. So this is going to be another div and we're going to give it a class name of MT4 to separate it from the top again. And this one's going to be a lot simpler. So we're going to give it a label HTML4 of bedrooms. We're going to give it a class name of block. And inside of here, we're just going to say beds. So now the actual input itself will give an ID of bedrooms to match the HTML4 name of bedrooms. We're going to give it a type of number so that the user can't enter, I don't know, number bedrooms B or something like that. We'll give it a class name of uh, padding two so that we can have a little bit of padding in that input. And I'm just going to save this to get formatting. And we need to register it now with um, React Hook form. So we're going to call ref with register and an object. And we're going to pass in a few validations. So this is required. Please enter the number of bedrooms. And we can set a max value. So let's say we don't want ridiculously big houses in this system. So a max of a value of 10 with a message of, whoa, too big of a house. Just going to save that. We can also set a min so we can say um, value of one message um, must have at least one bedroom like that. Okay. So with that registered and the validations in place, we can just pop down below and if there's an error, show it. So if errors dot bedrooms, um, then we're going to show the P for that errors dot bedrooms dot message. So if we're to come back here, we now have the number of beds showing up, but we're missing a submit button. So that's the last thing we need to add. Div class name of, oh boy, class name of MT4. And in here, we're going to have two things. So we're going to have a button 
And we're gonna add some classes to this to make it look nice with Tailwind. So a BG of blue, 500. On hover, we're gonna change the blue to a blue of uh, 700. We're gonna give it a font bold. We're gonna give it some vertical padding of two and some horizontal padding of four. And we're gonna make it rounded like that. So we're gonna give it a type of submit because we're submitting a form and we want to disable it when the form is submitting. So that state we set up a couple videos ago of a Boolean, um, we're gonna disable it when it's submitting. And in here, we're going to say save, just like that. So there's our save button. And I wanna add a cancel link here that will just take us back to the home page. So we're gonna use link in which goes an A tag that has the word cancel. And where's this gonna send us? Just to the home page. Like that. Cannot find link. Did I not import it? Oh, there we go. Uh, uncomment that so it's imported. It's all happy. We got this cancel. See how there's no space between here? Let's fix that by adding a space. That's always been so weird to me. In React, you have to put these in. Anyways, okay, so cancel takes us to the home page. When we click it, we can go back to add house. Um, what happens when the form is submitted? I just wanna test this. So on submit, we receive the data. The data gets passed to handle create. So why don't we just add a console.log here so we can see what the data looks like when the form is submitted. Just like that, we'll refresh it. So it doesn't let me put this in. Okay, so here's the error messages showing up. Please upload one file. Please enter your address. Um, beds is all good. Now, you could probably style these a little bit better to make them red. I'll leave that up to you but we're gonna finish the rest of this so we can submit this. So what I wanna do is we'll say 100 Young Street, choose it, there we go. Pick a house, there we go. Number beds one, submit this, and let's go check what was put into the console. So it was put an object, and this object has our data. So we have the address, 100 Young Street, number of bedrooms, the image, which is actually a file list with one image in there. And then we have the latitude and longitude. So at this point, we basically have everything in place to submit this data to the server, to upload the image to Cloudinary. But we need to do a bunch of work on the back end first before we can submit it there, because right now there's nowhere to submit it to. So the next number of videos are going to be starting to set up um, the GraphQL backend, the Prisma for the database, so that we can then come back to the front end and finish submitting this form. The last thing I wanted to do is, there's this weird H2 that was showing up below the address. I want to get rid of that, because that doesn't belong there. So we'll delete that. And then I only wanna show these last three fields after they've chosen an address. So what I'm going to do is wrap sort of an if statement around from image all the way down to the end of this um, div at the bottom. And because there's three individual elements, we're actually gonna wrap this, first of all, in a fragment. So open the fragment, close the fragment. And now that treats everything as sort of one node so that we can come back here and we can say, if there's an address, we'll do a short circuit and then display that if there's an address. So at the end of the fragment. So save that. Now we come back here and we have this and we can search 10 Young Street, choose it. And as soon as you choose the address, it will show the rest of the form. So we can add an image, it previews it. We can add six bedrooms and hit save. And that will submit the form so we can see the results here in the console, this data here. And now we're ready to move on. Okay, on to the next video.